Good evening, everybody. Talk us about the start. I was very delighted to see such a active discussion in the meeting on a cardiology topic. We are also going to discuss about another slightly provocative topic, no, may not be as provocative as the previous one. We all know that coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease is the leading cause of mortality all over the world. It is almost as high as 31 percent. That means every third person who dies in the world dies of a coronary artery disease. And we as Indians are at a higher risk. <coughs> if you compare, <coughs> Indians are three to four times likely to higher chance of having a coronary artery disease as compared to Americans. Six times higher as compared to Chinese and almost 20 times higher as Japanese. So we are at a negative, or we are at disadvantage being an Indian that we will have a higher incidence of coronary artery disease just by being Indians. The other point which I want to tell you is that as an Indian, again our incidence of coronary artery disease in the younger population is higher. It is almost 20 to 30 percent compared to 5 percent. That means the productive age of the young people are getting affected with coronary artery disease in Indians. And we live in Chennai, urban areas, so we are at a higher risk of developing coronary artery disease as compared to the rural people. Now, when we, ha when we diagnose a patient with a coronary artery disease, everybody is treated with lifestyle modification, that means weight reduction, exercises, diet control, stress map stress management and proper control of diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, obesity and all other things. Many of our patients we can manage with this much alone and we not, need not have to send them for any further procedures like angioplasty or bypass surgery. Several years we can manage our patients with good medical treatment with beta blockers, with aspirin, with statin. When we find that our patients cannot be managed properly with medical management. That means they continue to get angina in spite of adequate management. Or we see on non-invasive or invasive assessment that there is a large area of the myocardium at risk and therefore there is a higher chance of mortality in case of adverse event like acute myocardial infarction. Or patient has unstable angina or pre-infarction angina or post-infarction angina. These are the patients. Then we take them up for a further treatment. <coughs> now the patients can have a single vessel coronary artery disease or they can have a multi-vessel coronary artery disease. By and large it is well accepted now that if the patient has a single vessel coronary artery disease and the patient warrants revascularization, then angioplasty probably is optimal in such a patient. Group of multi vessel coronary artery disease where more than one blood vessel is affected. There is some controversy and some confusion in terms of treatment of these patients. Lot of us still think that bypass surgery is the gold standard for treatment of coronary artery disease, and many of us now feel that a lot of these patients whom we send for a bypass surgery can be safely treated with angioplasty and avoid a bypass surgery. Now why do we want to do that? I mean, so uh, these are a few slides uh, uh, which shows that the patient has a block and then the blast is done, another block is RCA, one block in the left hand is the similar action. And we also have a video of the bypass surgery which I will show you at the end. But Diagrammatically, we can say that we put the internal mammary artery onto the left anterior descending artery and saponous vein grafts beyond the block in the bypass <coughs> surgery where the chest is open completely, the sternum and that chest is open and then anastomosis is done. <coughs> now, we all remember, I think, all of us will remember when we were doing our surgery house, house, house shifts, our surgical list used to be full of uh, regatomy. TJ Vagotomy, super selective Vagotomy, and this Vagotomy, and that Vagotomy for treatment of neurogenal ulcers. And then came the cymatidine and uh, the surgical list changed completely. 
Even earlier, for tuberculosis, they will do training now palsy or put the patients into the um, uh, somewhere where they can uh, give rest to the lungs and that is the treatment. So, medicine is an evolving uh, discipline and uh, our aim on is first to cure the patient and second thing is if we can cure him with as less morbidity, as less pain and as less psychological trauma, we should hope for that or we should try for that. So what are the few limitations of bypass surgery? One of course it's a major <coughs> surgery. I mean you try telling your patient that you have to go for a bypass surgery, the first thing you have to thank, my God, bypass surgery sir, Maranda Purtu Muriyadar, Hawaii Panda Muriyadar. So they, it's a major procedure. You have to cut open the sternum and sometimes the sternum takes long time to heal. Many of these patients continue to get pain because of the sternal I mean, cutting open of the sternum. Sometimes the wound infections are there. You have to put the patient on anesthesia. The inherent risk which comes with the anesthesia, 1% mortality can be there. Then, of course, um, the loss of time. The patient needs to stay almost three months away from the work. And as I highlighted that nowadays, more and more young people are getting the coronary artery disease. So staying away from the work may not be their, in their best interest. The other thing is, of course, the stroke. Incidence of stroke is higher in patients with patients who undergo bypass surgery. So what what next we can offer them? And we can offer them the angioplasty, where the hospital stays only two to three days. Recovery is within one week. They can get back to work. It is practically a painless procedure, no anesthesia, of course, no infection, no blood transfusion, and problems related with the blood transfusion. Incidence of stroke in the patients who undergo angioplasty is also lower as compared to those patients who undergo bypass surgery. So, if it is so, can all the patients who have multivessel coronary artery disease can undergo bypass surgery? That uh, can undergo multivessel angioplasty. So, it is not true that all patients who have multiple blocks or multivessel coronary artery disease can undergo bypass surgery. There are certain limitations for the multivessel angioplasty. So, we are going to look at different groups and see which patients benefit more by or as much as by multivessel angioplasty so that you can avoid a bypass surgery and which patients can safely be treated with bypass surgery. See, multivessel angioplasty, one thing we have to realize is much more complex than a single vessel and therefore the operator who is performing it needs to be experience and a skill operator because all the regions are not going to be same. Some are going to be calcified, some are going to be long, some are going to be angular, some are bifurcated, some are osteal, some are CTOs. So you need operators who are more experienced, more skilled in dealing with multivessel selective Now, since the balloon angioplasty started, people have looked at this even when there was a plain balloon, Boba. Boba days also, people have tried to do multivessel angioplasty and try to compare them with bypass surgery. But we don't have to go back that much in the history. We will look at we will look at one point and where the bare metal stents were available. These are not the medicated stents. These are bare metal stents study. The bare metal stents, uh, when they were used in the ARTS-1 trial, around 600 patients underwent angioplasty and around 600 patients underwent bypass surgery. And these patients then were followed up for three to five years for various endpoints. The important endpoint when you look at is the depth. And you should see that you should avoid death in the patient with coronavirus. That is your foremost objective is to keep the patient alive. And if you look at it, when these patients were followed up, even with the bare metal stents for say 1,200 days or over three years or four years, whatever it is, the survival was slightly better with the angioplasty as compared to bypass surgery, which was of course not statistically significant. But one object we have achieved is kept the patients alive. The second objective is, have you got the myocardial infarction, stroke rate? And you look at them and you see that the stroke 
the Mygard infection rate in the two groups are similar and you look at the composite endpoint of death mass like Mygard infection and stroke and they are similar with the p-value which, which is uh, not significant. So even with the bare metal stents, the actual primary endpoints of death Mygard infection and strokes were similar in patients with multivessel disease who undergo angioplasty versus bypass surgery. Then why the patients were not going for angioplasty? Why they were going for a bypass surgery? For this reason. This is a wide gap and this gap is because of the increased incidence of risk genosis. See, when you increase, when you add the repeat procedures in these patients, then the event free survival becomes 65% versus 83%. There is almost 20% gap is there now. That means one out of five patients needed a repeat procedure to undergo a bare metal angioplasty. And this was the deterrent why the patients were then preferred over for a bypass over angioplasty. But I'm talking about the days when it was a bare metal stent. Then came the medicated stents. And the main advantage of medicated stents was to bring down the risk genosis rate. To breach this gap bring down the risk genosis rate and make it as good as bypass surgery so that then you can treat your patient with minimal discomfort and give them the same benefit as bypass surgery. So came the ARTS 2 trial. In the ARTS 2 trial, about 600 patients with multivessel disease underwent angioplasty using a cipher scale. This was the first serolimus coated medicated stent and you can see almost 26% of these were diabetics, 54% had a triple vessel disease and almost 14% of them had type C lesion which is really a complex lesion. Each patient had over 3.7 stents that means this was really a multivessel angioplasty where patients were given 3 or 4 stents and these patients were then followed up. First for one year, then three years. At the end of one year, you can see that the orange column is for the multivessel angioplasty with the medicated stents, and it fared better than the bypass surgery, which is a green column. Even survival free from the maze, all types of maze, including repeat procedures, was equal in the two 88.5% versus 89.5% at the end of one year in all some patients <coughs> and with 28% of them diabetic. When you look at it again, the maze is around 10.4% in the stent group, the medicated stent group versus 11.6% in the bypass group. When they looked at each of one of them like death, which was lower, stroke rate was lower, either infection rate was lower, and the repeat procedures were also low. So the ARCH2 trial suggested that many of the patients with multivessel disease can safely be treated with angioplasty. But we didn't stop there. I mean, we still were not satisfied with what we have discussed. So we took a syntax trial. And in the syntax trial, again, the first generation paclitaxel stent, the taxa stent was used. And over 900 patients underwent angioplasty and bypass surgery, and then they were followed up for one year, two years, and three years. <coughs> at the end of one year, if you look at the primary endpoint, that is death, stroke, and myocardial infarction, was identical: 7.6%, 7.5%. That means the objective of achieve, keeping the patient safe was safely achieved with this. The stroke rate was lower. 2.2% in a bypass group versus 0.6% in angioplasty. So a disabling stroke you could avoid. There was about 7% higher incidence of repeat procedures in the angioplasty group versus bypass surgery. And 7%, if you can say 2% stroke, then this narrows down to almost 5%. I think uh, you can safely say that if you want to avoid a major bypass surgery, you take a 5% risk of a repeat procedure, I think it is worth it. When you look at them for second year, same thing. The composite endpoint of death, CV and MI, both the lines are merging. Strokes still lower in the angioplasty group and this gap remains around 7 or 8%. So 
it did widen as much as was expected that as these patients were followed up for second year and even on the third year, we can see that even at the end of third year, the stroke rate is low, the trend was same, and this gap, uh, the, the final end points were similar 14 and 12, and this gap still remains around 7 8%. I mean, at the end of three years, if you can avoid a bypass surgery and have a 7 8% increase the risk of repeat procedure and a reduction in the incidence of stroke, probably you wouldn't mind sending them or undergoing your multivessel angioplasty. Do we send all the patients of multivessel angioplasty to bypass surgery? The answer to that probably is no. When we divided this patient based on the complexity of the regions, we divided them in syntax code, the low, intermediate and high. And when we looked at the low, low syntax score, which would be about one third of your patients, 275, 300 patients in the angioplasty group out of 900, one third of these patients, when they were followed up for three years, even the repeat procedure rate was same in this group of the patients. 22.5% and 22.7%. All maze, that is death, myocardial infarction, stroke, and repeat revascularization was not different. So if your patients, one third of your patients who have a multivessel disease, who falls in the low syntax score, I think they definitely should not go for a bypass surgery. So you are saving one third of your patients from not going for a bypass surgery. What happened to the intermediate score? The intermediate score, there was a definite increase, which was about 8%, 9% increase in the incidence of MACE primarily on account of repeat revascularization with some slight increase in the incidence of myocardial infarction as well. So this group of the patient, you can counsel them well. And if you feel as a comp uh, as an operator competent that you can give them good results, the size of the vessels are good and they are accessible, then I think with the proper discussion with the patient, many of this group can also be shifted to the angioplasty compared to the bypass <coughs> When you come to the high syntax score, there is no question that these patients should <coughs> undergo a bypass surgery and you should not recommend these patients to undergo multivessel angioplasty because this gap is really very wide and in this group there is a definite increase in, in the incidence of death as well as myocardial infarction in the patients who undergo multivessel angioplasty compared to bypass surgery. So patients who are in the high syntax score, definitely bypass surgery. One third of the patients who are in the low syntax score, definite angioplasty. People who are in the intermediate syntax score, you can discuss with the patient and then decide depending on the socio-economical factor, age and various other things and then decide whether you have to send them for angioplasty or a bypass surgery. There are a few more trials like the Iraqi trial which also looked at the same thing and found that the, the, the the multivessel angioplasty is the same procedure. Diabetes remains a bone of contention. We still do not have a full data as to whether the diabetics are better off with bypass surgery or whether the diabetics are better off with multivessel angioplasty. There are there are trials that if you use a plaquenil axis stent, uh, then the, the, that is better. The next integrity stent, which has come with the result, is also superior in the diabetic patients. And there are certain diabetics which do as well as with the angioplasty as compared to bypass surgery because you have seen that in all these trials, 28-30% of the patients were diabetic. This was one such a trial and you see that the mortality in this group where cipher was used in diabetics with the bypass and the PCI, the difference in terms of deaths was not there. But diabetes still remains a topic of discussion where one can decide in favor of bypass surgery if they feel that the vessels are really not of great size and it's a small vessel and diffuse disease, then you can prefer. But a lot of diabetics also can safely undergo multivessel angioplasty. So, how, so now coming back to final recommendation is low syntax score, one third of your patient's syntax score. And syntax score is very easy actually. It is loaded in your computer. You just need to fit in the character of the lesions and the computer calculate the syntax score and give it and many of us do give it in our reports 
for the family physicians to understand what was the syntax for, for this particular patient. And that is the reason why we have chosen the particular treatment option for this patient. Intermediate syntax score, it is a, a point of discussion between the patient and the family physician and the cardiologist to decide a high syntax score definite surgery. I feel that younger patients, uh, we should try and avoid bypass surgery as much as possible. I mean, somebody has said that coronary artery disease is like a cancer. You don't cure it. You just you just treat them. And uh, if you have a patient who is 30 years or 35 years and he has a triple vessel disease, you send him for a bypass surgery. By the time his body by 50 is again ready for another bypass surgery. By the time he's 65, 70, he's again ready for a bypass surgery. I think one more thing a few people can survive two or three bypass surgeries, not all of us. So in this patient, if you do a multivessel angioplasty and take a chance of say five or eight percent recurrence, even then, ninety percent of the time you could avoid a bypass surgery or delay the bypass surgery or postpone the bypass surgery because coronary artery disease is a metabolic disease. It is not you cannot cure it. There is nothing which you can give and it is going to stop. So younger patients, we would prefer if suitable then to put them through a multivessel angioplasty, unless of course they are in the syntax flow is very high. And somehow, sometimes the older people who have a lot of comorbid, comorbid conditions, in these patients we prefer to do multiple stentings or at least the culprit lesions to, to just let them leave symptomat asymptomatic as long as possible. I think the bell has rung. So maybe we will stop here. Thank you.